Hey, welcome back to week three of Growing in God Confidence. This week, we're looking at Acts chapter 24 and what it reveals to us about growing in our confidence in God. Looking at the life of the Apostle Paul now in Acts 24, we see that despite being assaulted and plotted against and nearly killed, Paul's confidence in God remained steadfast. What's his secret? His secret is a deep personal knowledge of God's character and nature rooted in Scripture. When brought before the Roman governor Felix to face accusations from the Jewish leaders, Paul's response reveals this, this, the, the source of his strength. He declares in verse 14, I worship the God of our fathers, believing everything laid down by the law and written in the prophets, having a hope in God that there will be a resurrection of both the just and the unjust. This statement is profound. Paul's confidence wasn't based on blind faith or wishful thinking. It was grounded in a thorough understanding of God's Word. He had studied the law and the prophets, seeing how they had all pointed to Jesus. As Jesus himself is said of doing after his resurrection, walking along the road to Emmaus, it says, the beginning, Jesus starts with the beginning of, with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself in Luke 24, 27. The lesson of, uh, for us is clear. To grow in God confidence, we must know God's character and nature as revealed in his word. It's not enough to simply know about God's promises or seek moral lessons from the Bible. We must read scripture with the intention of knowing God himself more fully and completely. As we deepen our knowledge of God, our trust in Him naturally grows. And as our trust grows, so does our confidence. This confidence isn't arrogance, it's not self-reliance. It's a humble assurance in the power and faithfulness of the God that we serve. Paul's confidence was particularly rooted in his belief in the resurrection of Jesus. He understood that if Christ truly rose from the dead, then there is nothing that our God can't do. This truth became the foundation of Paul's life and ministry. As he wrote to the Corinthians, he said, For I delivered to you as of first importance when I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised from the dead on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. This belief in the resurrection wasn't just some theological viewpoint for Paul. It was a living hope that enabled him to endure hardships and persecution. He knew that his labor would not go in vain because of the reality of the resurrection. When given the opportunity to share his faith with Felix, Paul didn't shy away from the difficult truths. He spoke about righteousness, self-control, and the coming judgment. These weren't random topics. They were precisely what Felix, who was known for self-indulgence and cruelty, needed to hear. Paul's approach reminds us that knowing God's Word equips us to speak truth boldly and relevantly, even to those who are in positions of power. It also challenges us to consider whether we're willing to share the whole truth of the Gospel, even when it might be uncomfortable or unpopular for us. The account of Felix's response is a sobering reminder of the danger of delay in spiritual matters. When confronted with the truth, Felix was alarmed, some translations say afraid, and chose to make this decision saying, go away for the present. When I, am, when I have the opportunity, I'll, I'll summon you. This was a delay that effectively was a denial of Christ. How often do we fall into the same trap, putting off important spiritual decisions for a mere, op, more opportune time. The Bible is clear, now is the day of salvation, 2 Corinthians 6, 2. We aren't, we aren't promised tomorrow and the, the right time to follow Jesus is always right now. As we reflect on Paul's example and the truth that he stood for, we're challenged to examine our own lives. Are we actively seeking to know God through His Word? Are we allowing the knowledge of God to build our confidence in Him? 
Are we ready to share the truth of the gospel even when it's challenging for us? Growing in God confidence isn't about mustering up positive feelings or forcing ourselves to believe. It's about getting to know the God that we serve, knowing His character, His power, His faithfulness, as revealed to us in Scripture. As we do this, we'll find our, our trust in Him deepens, our courage grows, and our lives become transformed. Let's commit to devoting time to get to know God better. This means more than just casual Bible reading. It, it, involve, it involves studying the Word of God, meditating on it, discussing it with others in our small group. As we do this, we'll find ourselves better equipped to face life's challenges with the same unshakable confidence that Paul demonstrated. Remember, the God that we serve is the same God who raised Christ Jesus from the dead. If we truly believe this, what do we have to fear? What challenge is too great? What circumstance is beyond His control? As we grow in our knowledge of God, may we also grow in our confidence in Him. May we, like Paul, be able to stand firm in the face of adversity, knowing the one with whom we have believed. And may our lives be a testament of the transforming power of God in us. God bless you.